And if you if you wanted to put some like white whole wheat flour, which is a King Arthur flour um, variety, it's um, it is whole wheat, but it's almost as white as regular all purpose flour. You can probably substitute like up to half or so. I would not really put in more than maybe a third of whole wheat flour subbing in for this because you need the tenderness of the regular um, flour. So there's our flour. It also calls for two tablespoons of just plain granulated sugar. And this helps not only give it a little bit of sweetness, but it also helps it brown. So that's a nice, a nice addition there. And then a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I do buy the diamond crystal kosher salt, which is um, the red box. If you use regular table salt or if you use Morton's kosher salt, the grains of those two salts are much finer, they're much smaller. So they're twice as many of the individual grains fits into whatever you're measuring. So you need half as much if you understand. So the, the kosher salt, the, the diamond crystal is bigger crystal. So you need more than you need if you're using regular table salt or the Morton's salt, the Morton's kosher salt. So we have all of our dry ingredients in our food processor. And I'm using the metal blade, just the regular metal blade. I'm just gonna fix something on my computer. There we go. And I'm just gonna pulse this a little bit just to get, oops, I need to plug it in, sorry. Just to get the, um, the dry stuff. Ugh, sorry, one second. Combined. So we have all the dry in here. Now we're gonna start talking about our butter. So I'm gonna get the butter out of the fridge. And it's really important that your butter is cold. So it has two sticks of butter. And this is where if you want to, you can substitute an equal amount of Crisco or lard if you'd rather. Um, I've never done it with lard, but I've read that it works with Crisco. Um, and you wanna cut the fat, whatever you're using, the butter here, into roughly, um, what would this be? Well, I've, I've divided the, the stick into four long pieces this way. And then I'm gonna cut each of these into cubes. So they're about eight slices this way and four the other. So about 32 pieces. And we'll put all of this cold butter in the food processor. This one stick that I just cut and this stick, which I cut earlier, and it's just been in the fridge. So it's the same amount. So two full sticks in there. And then we're gonna put the top back on and we're gonna pulse this 10 one second pulses. So it's just kind of quick, but not super quick. You can tell each one of those was a real hit. It wasn't a deep, it was a, a, a one second pulse. And then we'll see what it looks like inside. And I can show you, there's still some pieces of butter that are not really tiny. And that's okay because we're gonna keep on pulsing this when we add the water. So back it goes on there. And now again, we want super cold water. So I have, ice water in this container, and I'm gonna measure out of here a half a cup of ice water. And I'm gonna put that in the food processor. And again, hit it 10 times of those same one second pulses. Okay, so here we have our dough and that is it. It's hard to believe, but we're actually done mixing our dough. So you can see it's still really crumbly. 
but if you were to pick it up and squeeze it, it comes together. And what we're going to do now is take two clean dish towels. If you are having this recipe, you would only use one, obviously. And we're going to dump the dough onto our two clean dish towels. Let's see if I can kind of measure this out. About half there and half on this one. And you can see we have lots of pieces of butter here, a lot of, um, you know, uh, kind of wet flour. But what's going to happen is all those big pieces of butter will stay pieces of butter, and that's what gives us the flakiness. And to get it to come together, I'm just pulling up all the corners, the four corners of the clean dish towel, and I'm going to squeeze it and twist it together. And then just press it down on the counter. And what we have is a lovely piece of pie dough. So this has to sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. So I'm gonna do that to the second one. I'm gonna wrap it up again, give it a good squeeze and do that to the second one. Make sure all of it's down there together. I'm gonna to squeeze it. It's like making a little beggar's purse and then give it a press on the countertop. You're just squeezing it all together. So we're gonna put these two little packages in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. And it's not only gonna re-chill it, which they always say you wanna do because you want your dough to be, to be chilled. So it's gonna allow the water to hydrate the dough. So you really have to do this step. You must wait about 30 minutes before you roll it out. So I'm gonna put these in the fridge and take out one that I made earlier. So, this is what I made about an hour ago. And just like the others, it's been sort of pressed together. There's a little, few little stragglers there. And you can see it's, it's all sort of brought together because I squished it in the towel. Now we're going to roll this out. So if you, want to work on your countertop that's great i prefer to work on a big board and one tip to keep your board from sliding around is underneath i have a slightly damp folded towel so that keeps everything from moving around when i when i roll so i've put a little bit of flour on the board i put a little bit on top of the dough if you have a favorite rolling pin use that this is the one that I like these days, it's a French rolling pin. It doesn't have those roller bearings. It's just tapered at the ends. Um, and when I start, I sort of make a cross and then again, an X to just get everything going. And then I even sort of squish it back together. So I want to keep it in the round shape, which is one thing that's nice about when you bring it together in that beggar's purse is it starts out round and then you can roll it more easily into a round shape for your pie dough. And then you can just start again, going back and forth in that sort of X and cross motion. And then once it gets a little more flattened, you can start rolling it at your, however you like. It is a nice idea to flip your dough over Make sure that it's nice and floured, both on top and underneath. If it sticks, no worries, just get a little more flour, throw a little more underneath. You can use a spatula to pull it up. It's a really forgiving dough. So if you do get a crack, don't worry, just take a little edge and stick it in there and just make a little patch. It totally doesn't matter. So, Roll this out. And I read in the recipe where I got this that you want to go to about the, um, 
the thickness of a Ritz cracker for a pie, which I thought was a pretty good image. So I'm just trying to keep it nice and round. And I don't know how well you can see this. I'll try to hold this up. But you can see that there's bits of butter. Can you see that at all there? I'm not sure if I'm in the light or not. There are bits of butter that are larger pieces. And then there's some, you know, just sort of dough areas. So the butter pieces is where you're going to get that flake. Because what happens is the moisture in the butter, the water, makes steam when it's in the oven. It expands, and that then creates that little pocket of air that gives you the flakiness. So it's the flavor and the flakiness that we're after. So this is probably pretty good. If I were going to make a galette with this, I would just slide this onto a piece of parchment, maybe right onto a cookie sheet, and then I'd fill it up and then just roll these edges up and over the filling and maybe paint the outside with some cream or an egg wash, maybe put a little bit of um, like that sugar in the raw on the edges, which makes a really nice crunchy um, uh, touch to it. We're going to put this into a um, pie plate. And I've already used um, a ceramic pie plate and a, and a um, glass pie plate, which are really, I think, the best conduits for the heat. And you can obviously see in the glass um, pie plate. This um, metal one is a good one, too. And to get a um, pie dough into the pie plate, there are a couple ways you can do it. I like to just fold it over gently, place the pie plate right next to it, and then lift it over at least halfway, and then open it up to where you've got it centered. And if you need to, you can adjust. And you want to let it sink into all of the depth of the pie plate so it's not stretching. So lift up the edges, let it sink down into the bottom, and then gently press it into your pie plate. Like that. Now, if this were a smaller pie plate and we had more than this, well, I can actually clean this up a little bit, actually. I'm going to take some scissors here, which are really the best, I think, tool to clean up the edges. And I'm just going to get off the raggedy edges. So not very much, but just anything more than about an inch over the edge of the pie plate. You just want to cut off. If you prefer to do this with a sharp knife, that's great. I just think there's so much control with scissors, so I like using scissors. And that all looks pretty good. I don't want to take any more than what I've got like that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to make this into a single crust pie. If I were going to do a double crust pie, I would leave this edge, roll out the double crust, put the filling in like apples, whatever, put the pie crust on top, do the same thing, roll out a second piece of dough. And then I would cut the same one inch or so edge of that second top crust so we have matching and give it a little bit of a press just to seal again the top crust on this on the bottom crust if I had a double crust and then either single crust or double take the dough and just fold it under itself gently just neatening up the edges which is really nice and giving it just a little extra thickness because, you know, I don't know, that's the best part of your pie is the crust on the outside. So give it a little more edge, a little more depth and thickness on that edge just by folding it under itself. It's a little cleaner that way than if you folded it into the pie. You want to fold it in and underneath. And it's a good chance you can correct any little cracks you might have. And just work your way around. Okay. 
And then we can talk about fluting or decorative edges on this. The options are just enormous. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that I like to do a pie crust. So one is with um, to make just a wonderful fluted edge. You take your dominant hand and make a V with your thumb and forefinger, and then use your other hand, your pointer finger, to go between that. So you press in with your dominant hand, thumb and forefinger toward your other uh, forefinger, and then your thumb goes where your pink, where your pointer was, and you just continue along like that. And it makes this really nice fluted edge like that. Or you can do a um, like a rope, which is just using, again, the pointer finger and the pointer finger, actually both fingers, both hands, pressing right one next to the other, sort of making a little bit of an S shape. So when, again, you come to the next spot, you put your finger where the other one was and then continue along the way like that. And it just makes a nice little rope-like edge. Or you can do something with a fork. You can certainly just go right along the edge like this, or you can alternate your fork so you have a little bit of a zigzag. Or you can do whatever your favorite way to do it. So I'm just going to continue here with the fluting. And you can even do a little alternating fluting and then fork and fluting. You can play around as much as you want. So this is now ready either to fill if you don't have to par bake your crust like if you're making um well an un, an apple pie let's say that has a crumb coating on it you could just fill it and bake it like this if you're making something where you like a, a custard pie like a pumpkin pie for instance it's nice to par bake your crust because oftentimes that kind of filling doesn't need as long a time in the oven as say an apple pie to really get the crust well cooked. So for that, I really recommend putting um, your pie on a cookie sheet. Whenever you cook this pie, because it has so much butter on, please remember to put a cookie sheet under your, under your pie or you're gonna be calling me to come over and clean your oven. So put a cookie sheet under your pie and then take a piece of parchment and lay it in your pie and really sort of make sure that it gets down into the edges. Same as when we put the pie in, the pie crust in itself. Make sure it's all the way down to the edges. Make sure you haven't wrecked any of your beautiful work there. And then we're going to take dried beans or if you have pie weights, but these are just dried black beans and I just reuse them and fill it all the way up. So this is a, this is maybe close to two pounds of dry beans and make sure that they really fill the entire um, pie crust. And we're gonna put this in a 425 preheated oven for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna take it out, take out, you know, carefully take out the pie weights in the parchment. And if you need to, you can take a fork and just push down any bits. It shouldn't have risen at all, but if you feel that it needs a little help, you can just let out a little steam. If anything is cuffed up a tiny bit, put it back in the oven again for a, say a pumpkin pie, put it back in the oven just for like two more minutes, just until it's very, very, very light golden brown. And then you can bake it with your um, pumpkin pie filling. If you're making something where the pie is not baked, whether it's a chocolate cream pie or something like that, you do the second bake for more like 10 to 12 minutes. And that you need both times you want to watch it 
that it doesn't get too brown on the edges, but you want the, the crust to be nice and golden brown if you're not going to be baking it again, if you're making again, like a chocolate cream, which is a favorite at my house for Thanksgiving. Um, what else? I guess I just leave it open to questions or, or you know, any other advice that people have, because obviously this is only one way to make pie and there are a million good ways. And I welcome your, uh, you know, you're sharing your good ideas. I have a question. Yes. Um, is this your own recipe that you've like fine tuned? It's one, it, no, I, cut the flour down a little bit, but the recipe originally came from um, a woman named Alexander Stafford. She has a great website if anybody's looking for a good multi-purpose um, recipe website called Alexandra Cooks, I believe it's called, or Alexandra's Kitchen. I should know. Anyway, she's fantastic. Um, very conversational, super approachable recipes, very delicious recipes she does a lot with bread um a lot of vegetarian stuff so she um has her original recipe has a full two and a half cups of flour and when i make it maybe i'm just not fluffing my flour enough but i know myself well enough i do two and a third cups that extra bit to go to two and a half just makes my pie crust too dry it still works but it's a little more crumbly than i like so um, otherwise, this is really her recipe. <laughs> another um, oh, and there's another person Emma. put the link uh, in the chat. So it's oh, good. cooks.com. So yes. that's cool. She's so great. Check that out. I, I think she has fantastic recipes. Um, yeah. I, I have I like another question regarding when you were talking about the double, double crust. Mm-hmm. Is that essentially what it sounds like? Is that where you just make two and layer them together? Right, right. For instance, this recipe, what we made in the food processor made two of the two, two pieces of dough this big. I only rolled out one. If we're making an apple pie, for instance, or a blueberry pie or something like that, where you want that top crust. Oh, okay. So that's do, the double do crust this, is on the top. Roll out another so that you have a second crust on top as well as underneath. And oh, okay. I didn't know it. if you had like two crusts on the bottom. <laughs> I was trying to- uh, No, no, filling- But that could be interesting. <laughs> that, that more crust, the better. That's yeah. Not oh, that's thing. great. <laughs> and then of course you guys all must know if you have any scraps, you know, I have a little bit here, don't throw them away or feed them to the dog roll them out and sprinkle them with um, cinnamon sugar and bake them and they're delicious little cookies. So yeah. Don't, don't, don't throw them away. They're so yummy. Again, my, my pie baking grandmother used to <laughs> offer pie crust cookies to trick-or-treaters. Oh, so that was, uh, <laughs> I think some of them liked it. Some of them thought she was just crazy because who wants anything but candy on Halloween. <laughs> and I can see Claire and Emma are here. <laughs> yeah, she's really attentive. So and grandma. <laughs> I know. So cute. She has FaceTimed, not so much with me, but with other people. So mm -hmm. she knows how that works. Does anyone else have a favorite um, pie crust? Or do you use Crisco? Do you use butter? Do you use lard? Does well, I haven't tried that <laughs> technique that you just used, so that might make it easier for me because I always have issues rolling it out when I try to make my own from scratch. So that's why I usually just end up forming it in the pan, which is cheating, but that's, yeah. fun, you know, when it's not coming together. So I'm going to try it again following this recipe and I will keep you updated. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Well, let me know or call me if you have any questions. Okay, sounds um, good. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, I okay. think it's it's pretty foolproof. Um, I mean, you know, the, the issues, if you have issues, okay. it's likely um, that you have a little too much flour, which means that you just put too much, you know, you sort of packed it down or your flour is 
denser for whatever reason. Um, you know, it, it settles during shipping, it settles when you put it into your container that you store your flour in, you know, all of that. So maybe put a little less flour in than you think, which is why I cut it back from the original recipe. Um, make sure your butter's super cold. Make sure your ice water is truly ice water. Um, and, and I think this, you know, I have lots of ice water in this measuring cup and then I measured it into a second cup. So I'm not putting ice in my food processor. I'm putting very cold water in the food processor. I always liked uh, the Betty Crocker uh, pie crust and it's always on the inside of their cover. Oh, is it a, a recipe similar to this? Uh, it doesn't call for butter. It calls for Crisco or lard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, they're like two cups of flour and three fourths cups of, of Crisco and then seven tablespoons of, of um, cold water. Of cold water, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the proportions are usually pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important too, if you want that really combination of flaky and crumbly crust to have the fat, whatever you use at the end, you know, once you've rolled it up, to be still in some bigger pieces, some sort of sheets, and then others that are very small. Um, and that's that's one reason why I like the food processor and it does it for you. I mean, you could definitely do it too far. That's why it's super important to just do those short pulses, 10 of them, um, so you don't get your butter too small, but some are super small and some are larger. And that's where you where you want it. You want your, your pie crust to have some some of both size pieces of fat. Um, and having your, your oven hot enough at about 425 is the recipe, or sorry, is the temperature that, that this recipe calls for for blind baking, for par baking your crust. Um, so check your oven, make sure you have, you know, your oven is accurate. You can buy a, a you know, for like $5 or so a, a temp, a, thermometer to put in your oven. I know my my controls are not accurate. So I often have to jack it up to like almost 500 on the knob to get it to get to 425 and then I kind of monitor it. Um, so it's just important to know your equipment, know your ingredients and, you know, and give yourself, you know, a little flack. If it's not, doesn't look perfect, it's still gonna taste amazing and, who isn't happy when somebody makes them a pie? You know. So. Listen, I always learned to add water, um, not all at once, but periodically as you're mixing it up. And I was surprised uh -huh. to see that you just dumped it all in at once. Yeah. So that would be when you're sort of mixing it by hand, I guess. Maybe. Is that the difference? Yeah. I, I guess so. I mean, this because it's in the food processor and it you know sort of just gets that burst of of stirring together and cutting together because i'm using that um where's oh here you know i'm using the metal blade so it's really it's like those knives yeah like you would do do if you're doing it by hand or that pastry blender you know that that people have um but i guess um since it's such a short, you know, you don't want to over process. I think that's the danger is if you were to over process. So just to put the water in and then give it just the, the bare minimum of mixing. I think if you were to dribble it in, you might be tempted to over mix because the machine is so powerful. Yeah. Whereas when you're doing it by hand, you're, you're much more gentle. And so you have, you have some, some leeway because you really are just hydrating the flour. You're putting, you want the water to get the flour moist enough to hold together to make the dough, to encase the butter, to. Right, and, and I think the recipes I've always followed have been like, add enough water so that it looks like this. And I guess right. maybe I've never added enough water, I've added two. So it's, it, it seems more idiot proof just throwing it in and doing it. Yeah. Like. But that's the thing. I mean, that that kind of, you know, it's not very helpful if you feel uncertain or just nervous about, you know, do it until it looks right. Well, what the heck does that mean? 
But right. that sort of goes to the point that sometimes the flower is denser. So, so you have more in the bowl, whatever kind of bowl you're using to mix it. Sometimes it's even more moist. I mean, if you make this pie in the summer when it's humid and, you know, even though you have your flour in a closed container, it's likely to be holding more moisture, even a small amount more can matter. Whereas in the dead of winter, when it's super dry and you need more water. Huh. So that's why that kind of to feel is, um, while it's sort of frustrating and leaves you, uh, I don't know, um, it allows you to, to um, or it encourages you to take a look and, and make a judgment. And it, like anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. Yeah. So I encourage you to make pie. And you can I usually bring them to the library and give away pieces of pie with a book and, you know. <laughs> Susan, have you ever used um, pastry flour? I have not for pie crust. Um, my understanding is pastry flour has a lower gluten um, content. So it doesn't really give you the structure that you want with pie crust. You wouldn't necessarily want to use a bread flour, which has a super high gluten content, but you need that balance between tender and all that and giving it enough structure. And I have a feeling if you use pastry flour, which is a softer flour that's great for cakes and things like that, some biscuits, you'd probably be sacrificing the flakiness because it needs some, some tough structure you know, tougher structure to go with the tenderness. And I'd love to anyone your, else um, used it. Yeah. Well, I, I was just curious if you ever use it, but yeah. I also want to compliment you. I loved your little demonstration of putting it in the flour sack. I just thought that was genius. Oh, that well, was that really was cool method. Idea. That's, that's Alexandra's kitchen. She but heard. very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I love and, that. You know, I do have to say, um, obviously clean duh. But it's a terry cloth, you know, you, you want to make sure it's something like um, that doesn't have a nap, you know, a real, because it'll get stuck and, you know, something like these um, flower sack towels are just my favorite things. Um, you know, I use them for dish towels and whatever. They're like two bucks at Target. So they're, I, can't, I can never, I can't have enough of these. I love them. Yeah. In fact, I even use them like when I take the pie, let's imagine this is already baked and full and ready to eat. So I would put a clean dish towel on the counter, put the pie in and then just tie up for a little um, carrying case. I wouldn't pick it up by this necessarily, but it keeps it fresh, clean. Um, yeah, obviously not with an open faced blueberry or something like that, but if it had a cover on it or you didn't mind you can take your pie wrapped in a in a clean towel and you haven't used plastic or foil and so they're handy for that way because they're nice and big subi did you have a question yeah the same thing nina said i love the towel thing because yeah, it's it seems super, like it's you, kind of fun it seems like you wouldn't um you wouldn't work the dough as much too. Like if you're trying That's to make a ball, really... you're like, you're like, you're, if, if the goal is to have some big chunks of butter to that just is, do it in the towel, you're not, it's not sticking on stuff and whatever. So I'm definitely going to try that. Yeah, that is such a good point because I think like biscuits, you know, pie crust does better the less you work it. You have to bring it together, of course. But if you just sort of squish it together that once and it's super satisfying. I mean, I wish you guys were here to just, you know, when you push it on yeah. your counter and it, you can feel it just sort of come together like a, you know, like a nice hunk of dough. It's, it is <laughs> kind of fun. So, yeah. And is anybody making a, a special new pie for the holidays or are you going with the classics? The trifecta as I call them. <laughs> I saw a cranberry lime tart that looked really good and bon appetit that I was thinking about adding to our array. 
for a little change. Sort of looks like a key lime tart, but it has cranberry in it somehow. Sounded kind of festive and fresh. So but you gotta have the pumpkin, gotta have the apple, gotta have the pecan in my book. And and chocolate cream. That's that's <laughs> Little extra special. I have a, um, yeah. a silver palette um, apple pie that I've made in the past, mm. and it adds some apple cider and maybe some cinnamon to the crust. Oh, really? So it it almost is like the crust becomes, you know. Not like a cinnamon oh, wow. bun, but it, it, yeah, yeah, it's the it's the um the big silver palette book, the basics. I think it's in oh, there. Oh, I'll look that up. And it's I a it's a um sour cream apple oh, where wow. you put the apples in the sour wow. cream and you do a crumble on the top. You yeah. still put a top crust on, but the the top of the filling is the brown sugar and and stuff crumbled on. Oh my on. god, that's yeah. So amazing. adding a little something to the to the pie crust, a little flavor like cinnamon or cider is pretty cool too. Mm, that sounds delicious. You know, I did want to mention when you um, take, if you blind bake your your pie crust, like I was saying, you know, with the with the weights and the parchment, and then you take it out, you may think, oh my God, there's like a sheen of butter. It will kind of reabsorb. One time I, 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 it happened, it has, doesn't happen every single time, but one time it did for whatever reason, I was kind of like, oh my God, what is going on? And it's, um, actually I'll show you now, this is what I baked earlier. This is a half pre-baked pie. So this, I would put like pumpkin pie filling in. It's golden and it's, it's cooked, but not fully cooked. And then this one, I'm afraid I got distracted and it got a little burned, but this one is more cooked fully. So this, I, sh I should have put, put a little collar of some foil around the edges. Um, so it got a little burnt, but I actually like that. So you can see it's, it's brown, it's golden brown. Um, but when I pulled this one out, it was sort of, just shimmering with butter, which isn't a bad thing, but but just so you know, it's that's good, I think. Has anyone ever made the crust with um, vodka, where they say to add vodka for part of the water, and that apparently makes it more tender because the alcohol burns off and you don't taste it, but it does something to help tenderize it. And I've I've never tried that, but I wonder if anyone else. No, sounds sounds crazy to you, <laughs> or maybe you've heard of it before, or even some of them have a little bit of vinegar as well, and that's you know that's one way to. I don't know. I can't remember what that's supposed to do for it, but I kind of like a straight shooting, butter, sugar, and salt, and the flour, and that's makes for delicious pie. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> oh, I must totally apologize, but was busy all day, took a shower, and just logged in maybe 15 minutes ago. Can you do it again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I'll send you the recipe, though. Okay. Yeah, I was going to remind you uh, to send us the recipe. And I will. I'm excited I will. for next week is Sandra Kelly. Oh, Yay. boy. And it's what are you making, a pasta Sandra? twist. Oh, uh, good. Uh, I'm not making pasta. It's just a little twist with pasta. Oh, right. okay. A twist of pasta. Twist of <laughs> pasta. Just reading off the the. That's a, that's okay. uh, you know, it's Susan. You're a tough act to follow. Oh no. You're all this tough is, acts to uh, follow. My, uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm almost, oh yeah, we hit 45 minutes. I was afraid I'd be done in like 15. <laughs> Thank goodness. I really enjoyed conversation. your conversation. That was really key. <laughs> like you were adding, yeah. <laughs> keeping us engaged and that was fabulous. I'm definitely going to oh, try good. this. Um, Great. Well, I will Marianne send it around. I'll send it you. to you. 
Oh, nice. Uh, Suzanne, if I send you the recipe, you can get it to everybody? Yes, we'll post it when we add this, okay? Wonderful. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you well, so thanks, much. Thanks, everybody. I'll Very see much. you guys. See you next week, Sandra. <laughs> hey, I'll watch the recording. Thanks. All right. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Good to see you. Bye. Bye.